guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a review and lip swatching on the new Color Blur by Lip Studio Maybelline Cream Matte Pencils and Smudgers. These are pretty new. Originally I had purchased three of the shades and then after testing them out, I went ahead and picked up two more. So kind of a spoiler alert, I really do dig these. I've seen these anywhere from $7.79, I believe this is the cheapest that I've seen them at Walmart, up to $8.99 at Ulta. But Ulta, if you do have a coupon, Maybelline right now is buy one and get one half off. So that's where I purchased most of these from. Within the line, there were 10 shades total. I picked up five of them. I feel like I have a nice variety of kind of plums, oranges, and pinky berry colors. So if you guys haven't seen these yet, just to give you guys a quick rundown, the idea of these whole products is you can wear them two ways, either a fully saturated lip like the one that I'm wearing right now, or to go for the whole kind of like gradation or ombre lip that tends to be a big trend in Asia I know you guys do see it here but it seems like here in the States a lot of people will do ombre lips of like a darker red to a lighter red in the center in Korea if you well I guess not specifically Korea but I feel like that's where I've seen it the most maybe because my mom's Korean so I see it in like the soap operas and random magazines what is a brand that Etude House they have something called the rosy lips tint and the whole big thing with that is that they saturate the color on the inner center of their lips and kind of bleed the color outwards just towards like the rest of their lips and leave the outer part nude or they'll put a clear gloss over it. So rather than doing two separate colors, they're only using one just to really create that ombre effect. It really just reminds me of kind of like a popsicle staining effect. Like when you were younger and you were sucking on a popsicle, how the color just saturated towards the center of your lips. So that's the idea behind this. What you can do is fill in the center of your lips and then take the opposite end, which is just this like white spongy, not spongy, rubbery applicator and you kind of just pull the color outwards. I personally, I feel like maybe I would like it more if I picked up one of the hot pink colors and did that, but with the colors that I got, whoops, wrong side, I prefer just to go in with my lips fully and color it in. Now before I go into the swatches, if you guys are familiar with my lip swatching videos, I always like to kind of give you guys a rundown of the formula, longevity, etc, etc. So like I said, originally I had picked up three of these, but going... At least I'm hoping that the formula is the same throughout the whole line. If that is the case, I didn't have any issues with feathering with the first three shades that I bought. I didn't have to wear a lip liner with any of the shades. Um, wear time, I want to say about five hours, but I didn't really go to lunch or anything. I was like sipping on a smoothie. I did have a sandwich and I didn't really have any issues except for on the very center of my lips, I did notice some fading. I will say halfway through the wear time, about two to three hours in, the formula started to feel a bit drier on your lips. Like if you guys are familiar with matte lipsticks, sometimes you'll almost feel like a pulling sensation towards the center of your lips just when they get drier. So what I did is just went through and applied a bit more. It didn't leave any kind of like crusty or cakey residue behind. Sometimes when you go in with a matte lipstick and you reapply, the matte lipstick will either drag some of the color you already had on the surface off or it'll like kind of pile up and like ball up in little crusty pieces. These go on super, super velvety. Another thing that I wanted to quickly mention, just because I have a feeling several of you guys would have asked for comparisons, the closest thing I could find in my collection was the L'Oreal Color Riche Lee Matte. I believe that they're re-releasing these either in new shades or the same shades. Um, these were only out for like, I want to say a couple months. A couple years ago this probably needs to go in the trash but sometimes I like to hold on to these type of things to compare to I will say that the color blur is even velvetier than these though but the wear time is very similar compared to the color pop lippy sticks in matte these have a truer matte finish the color pop lippy sticks in the matte formula I feel like sometimes come off more of a satin than a true matte these are a true velvety cream. okay so starting with the color Oh no, wearing a white sweater during a lip swatch video was not a good idea because now I have hot pink on my shirt. Whatever, anyways. Okay, the color that I'm wearing on my lips right now is 020 Orange Glad. This was really the only orange shade in the collection. At first I was gonna skip on it, but I was like, you know what, kind of these orange corally colors in the spring and summer are really pretty. I feel like if I had more of a tan, this color would pop even more. One thing I will say is out of the 10 colors, I didn't really notice any colors that were like a true brown nude. There was like a mauve, which I picked up, and then a kind of like a lighter pinky nude, but None of them were like a true brownish, tannish nude, which was fine with me because I don't wear those too often, but I just found that kind of strange. Okay, moving on to the second color. This one is number 25, Cherry Cherry Bang Bang. There was this one and I believe another one called Partner in Crime. 
those were like the two main red shades. So going in and applying this one. I honestly thought this one, because this was one of the first colors I bought, I thought it was going to be more of like an intense red, especially with the name Cherry Cherry. Bang, bang. Having cherry in the name, I don't know. I just think more of a true blue-toned red. I don't know if it's because it has this velvety formula that it doesn't go on as like red as, let's say, um, Mac Ruby Woo. That's kind of what I had pictured in my head. I feel like it looks super white in this lighting, but as you can see, these go on so smooth and pigmented. And lip swatch videos, as they start to like stain when you wipe them off, I don't know, I feel like it starts to make your lips look messy. But here is Cherry Cherry Bang Bang. I feel like this would be a flattering color on any skin tone, just because you really can't go wrong with a red lipstick. Now moving on to the third one. This one is number 40, My My Magenta. I feel like this one will be a favorite in the line for a lot of people. Just a really pretty kind of magenta berry color. Now moving on to the fourth shade I picked up. This one here is called I Like to Mob It. I instantly think of the lemurs in, what is that movie called? Madagascar. I like to move it, move it. She likes to move it. Those little creatures in there with the big eyes are so stinking cute. But as I mentioned earlier, within the line, I didn't notice a true nude. Now that's just going by the outer packaging, but I feel like they did a good job of matching, whoops, the color on the inside to the actual color of the product. So this one, and I believe, the next lightest one was called I'm Blushing, but that just looked like more of a pale pink than a mauve. So if you're looking for a true brown toned nude, I don't think you're gonna have much luck within this line, but obviously you can find a million other nudes at the drugstore. In fact, Maybelline released more of the Color Sensational Matte Lipsticks, the ones that are kind of in that like frosted grayish purple tube. I noticed some new colors in there and there were two nudes that did actually look super pretty. So yeah, this one is called I Like to Mauve It. I feel like it's just a great everyday easy throw on color. The fifth and final color I have here is called Plum Please. This is one, now since the formula is so velvety and creamy, this is one that I feel like you may want to go in with some kind of like clear lip liner or a lip primer. For instance, the Ozone Lip Liner from Anastasia. I know Milani makes one or no, Ozone Lip Liner from Urban Decay. I was thinking of the Lip Primer from Anastasia or the Clip Light Clip <laughs> Clear Lip Liner from Milani. Just because since the formula is so creamy with these darker colors, sometimes it's hard to go in and make a really clean line. The first time that I applied it, it was easy, but obviously the more and more you use it, the shape kind of shifts of the actual product. You know, when you first get it, it's just a nice sharp point, but as you use it, one side starts to smooth out. So sometimes it's hard to go in there and create really clean, precise lines. Obviously you could go in with like a brush and concealer afterwards just to really clear out the edges, but how gorgeous is this for like an evening color, even during the daytime, like in the fall. And this was the deepest color available in the line. So once again, that one is called Plum Please. All right, you guys, so that pretty much wraps this one up. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. If you guys would like to see any other reviews or swatches of other new drugstore releases, I know those True Match Lumi highlighters are, are out right now. I eye those every time I go to Target. I meant to pick them up tonight, but I was like, oh, I'm just gonna hold off and wait a minute more. But if you guys are curious of those and would like to see a review, leave a comment down below and let me know. I know, my hair, it's like so hot in here right now. It's like melting, I had to pin it back. But yeah, as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.